Right, back to back recording going on here. We are back with the Astra. Um, and yeah, like I mentioned in the last video on the review, what we're going to do is we're going to go over what the differences are between a standard VXR and the Nürburgring. So uh, yeah, let's hop into it. <laughs> Tidy your old plates. They look stupid. Get them out of here. UMR plates. Go check them out. They do all sorts of designs, all sorts of styles, all sorts of sizes. And that's not all. Come with me. <laughs> they also make show plates. Go check them out. Links in the description. And yeah, go do some buying. ZG15 for 15% off, free shipping, and sticky pads. So, as you guys would have seen from the last video, here she is in all her former glory in the lovely white colour. This is the only colour these cars come in, the white on white combo, which I think, honestly, is, is absolutely lovely. But I've actually done quite a bit of research on this, well, I say quite a bit of research, probably about 10 minutes worth of research because you can't find much information on these at all. Um, but yeah, I've done a bit of research on these to compare these against like your standard like Arden Blue VXR or whatever. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to walk you around. I'm going to show you what all the differences are. Uh, the first couple of things that you will notice is the white colour. Like I said, these only come in white and they only come on the 18 inch OZ looking alloys. Uh, these alloys are three kilos lighter per alloy than the standard VXR ones that you find on like your Arden Blue one or whatever. And they are also wider as well. So they're supposedly better for grip as well. Um, another thing as well that you guys obviously know is the iconic checkered stripe going up the car. Um, again, this is exclusive only to the Nürburgring editions. Um, I don't know why they did it. I think it's just to, you know, that like special little twist to it. Also as well, I don't know if this is Arctic white uh, or whether it's a special um, sort of like Arctic, uh, a special sort of white colour. But this, when I was researching it, it did say that this was like a, 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 a metallic paint job. So I'm not too sure. If you guys know, is this Arctic white or a different white, let me know. But I'm not too sure personally. Now, another thing as well is you'll notice loads of carbon accents around the car. Now, these are supposed to come with carbon mirrors, but unfortunately this one don't have them. Don't know if they've been replaced or whether this one wasn't optioned with it. I'm not too sure. Um, but yeah, so it's supposed to come with carbon mirrors. You've got your carbon B pillars as well, which this obviously has with the Nürburgring um, bit there as well. Uh, another thing as well that this car comes with, I'm trying to sort of, you know, work my way outside in. Uh, another thing that this car comes with is a, uh, I think it's a Remus exhaust system, which was developed by the Vauxhall Racing Company called Triple Eight. Um, so yeah, this is exclusive to this car. Um, uh, I think it's a slightly bigger pipe than standard and it, it just makes a lot more noise. Um, but yeah, so that's the visuals done. So let's hop on the interior and see what carries on throughout. Right, so yeah, like I said, we're gonna jump on the inside of the car now. So on the inside of the car, um, the first thing you'll notice again is you're greeted with a lot more carbon accents. As you can see, you've got uh, carbon kick plates, carbon door trims, carbon bits on the dash. As you sit in the car as well, you know, the carbon carries on across the dash and all that. Um, so yeah, you end up with quite a bit of carbon. Uh, another thing as well that you end up with on these cars is you get these nice full leather, um, heated leather, shall I say, uh, Recaro bucket seats with the Nürburgring label embossed in, in it, uh, which is quite a nice subtle little touch and I, I, I think it really sets the car off nicely. Um, but yeah, other than that, other than like, you know, your, your plaque of what your build number is, I don't think there is anything else. Yeah, no, I haven't really missed anything on the interior. So it's it's quite a subtle place to be and it don't really shout Nürburgring about it. I mean, obviously, as you can see, like the steering wheel is just a normal VXR steering wheel. You've got normal VXR gauges and it don't really shout Nürburgring in here. You know, yeah, the seats are nice. And it's got the Nürburgring thing in there and, you know, you get your carbon accents, but it's, it's quite subtly done. So yeah, moving on to a couple of like slightly more wordy bits about this car. Um, so according to a couple of reviews, like uh, blogs that I've 
that I've um, shut that because of the noise. Uh, according to a couple of the blogs and stuff that I've read, um, with all these extra accents and the extra power, which, oh yeah, I haven't told you the extra power, you only get about 15 more horsepower out of a Nürburgring edition than you do the standard Arden VXR. Um, and there's no set zero to 60 time either. Um, it's estimated to be around about 5.8 seconds, which if you compare that to a standard VXR again, the standard VXR does zero to 60 in 6.2 seconds. So you're getting 0.4 of a second faster, which, you know, is it's, it's all right, but it's, is it really worth it? You know, that's, that's your shout. Um, and yeah, oh, uh, that's another thing as well. I don't know if you guys would have heard us briefly discuss it, but these gearboxes, I'm pretty sure, come um, come factory fitted with an LSD or some form of LSD um, on the Nürburgring editions. I did not read any information on that, but that is what I've heard through um, like um, forums and what Brad has heard through forum as, uh, forums as well. Uh, is that apparently that the uh, gearboxes come with a built-in LSD. I'm not too sure, again, how true that is, but, you know, if that is the case, then please do let me know in the comments down below. Um, and finally, what do you actually pay for a Nürburgring? Well, according to an article that I've read, uh, the book price when, when this was new is £20,995 which is approximately 1,100 quid more expensive than your standard, you know, Arden Blue VXR or whatever. So, is it really worth it? Well, I'm going to step out of the car, and I'm going to tell you my opinions. So, do I think it is worth the extra money buying a Nürburgring Edition VXR? Well, you know, based on the fact that it's only got 15 more horsepower, and based on the fact that the 0-60 to 60 time is near enough the same, as what it is to a standard one. Performance wise, I don't really think it's worth it. You're paying an extra price tag for, for, for what essentially? A, a white car with a checker stripe pretty much, which is what a lot of the forums as well also say. They say all you're paying for really is, you know, your checkered stripes and all that, which a lot of people peel off anyway, and it just is a traditional Arctic white VXR after that. Um, but yeah, and then obviously looking at the extra touches as well. From the exterior, yeah, it is worth it all day long. It stands out, it's different, you can tell it's not a standard VXR, and it's really nice. But in the place that, you know, you're gonna spend a lot of your time, which is driving the car, in the interior, it don't really shout anything special, shall we say. You know, like, it would be cool if, like, the dials had, like, the Nürburgring on it, or, you know, something like that. Just a couple more, sort of, little touches like that that remind you that you are actually, in fact, in, a Nürburgring edition VXR and not just a standard one because as you look out over the dashboard over the dials you don't really shout it it just shouts VXR as you can tell the steering wheel VXR dials the same VXR dials that you'll see in a standard VXR but you know it's and until you look down at you know where your gearbox is and you see that special little plaque with what build number your Nürburgring is it don't really feel like a, a special car inside so I know this is a bit of a shorter video, but that's sort of my verdicts on this on on the car. It's very mixed. Overall, I don't think it is worth the extra price tag buying a Nürburgring over a standard VXR. Because like I said, and I will reiterate, you're not getting that much more better performance. You're getting a better exhaust system, which sounds good, which, you know, okay, fair play, that's not too bad. And if I am right in saying you are getting an LSD in the gearbox, which really does help you out when you drive the car. I mean, I've never driven a standard VXR. Brad's never driven a standard VXR. We've only driven this. And the way that this pulls you out of corners and pulls you down the road and all that, the performance is spot on. So if it has got an LSD, the LSD does work really, really well. Um, but yeah, and obviously visuals as well. Like you can see you're driving a special car, but from a driver's perspective, that's the one area that lets this car down majorly. And that is why that combined with the only the small power gain are the reasons why I don't think a Nürburgring edition is worth what, you know, what Vauxhall were asking. Now, I haven't looked at, um, I haven't looked at the second hand market at the moment, but at the end of this video, I will put a couple of screenshots in of what I could find of like 
the cheapest Nürburgring on the market and the cheapest Arden on the market um, to date. I will try and put that at the end, but I haven't looked you know, actively here. But I would say there might not be too much of a difference depending on condition and stuff. But yeah, that's my final view on it. And if you guys did enjoy this video, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that good jazz. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Following on from what I was saying at the um, at the last point of the video, let's go in to Auto Trader right now. Let's look at these um, these Astra VXRs, shall we? So scroll through all of these, find Voxel, go with can't see it Astra. There we are, model variant. Go. Will it, will it come up with Nurburgring Edition? Let's have a look. I uh, don't seem to come up with Nurburgring Edition. Unless it's like limited edition or something, I'm not too sure. Not a clue. Anyway, let's go with VXR. Um, year two. Well, let's say 2010. Uh, and then, yeah, let's search, see what pops up. Here we are. So, this is what pops up. Let's sort this by prices, lowest to highest. So, as you can see here, Cheapest one currently on the market is £3,489. Now, I am pretty aware that you can find them cheaper on forums and on you know places like Facebook Marketplace and all that. But, here we are. This is the cheapest one. This is just a standard VXR, so this is not an Nürburgring edition at all. Just a normal VXR. Um, 115,000 miles, 55 play, in black as well, which is actually quite a nice colour. It's almost like a, a purpley black from what I can see. Yeah, quite a nice tidy looking car. So let's that's obviously the cheapest one of them. Now let's carry on going through the list. There you go, an Arden one, four thousand four hundred and fifty with ninety eight thousand. Uh again not too bad. Let's see if we can actually try and find a um a Nurburgring. Here we are, here's the cheapest Nurburgring on the market today at the moment is five double nine five. Uh, 86,500 miles, so it's obviously about 40,000 miles less than uh, Brad's one. Um, as you can see, it's got the, the, the plaque on it, uh, it's got the leather seats, like what we were saying, it's got the original, in really good condition actually, OZ styled wheels. Um, you know, obviously you've got your, your carbon um, kick plate. Uh, one thing I've noticed as well is he has removed the stripe. Uh, it looks like it also comes with the carbon mirrors too. Um, yeah, this guy seems to take care of this car. Now, it's obviously on a personalised plate at the moment, so it's saying it's a 59 plate. Uh, there goes Brad in his now. I don't know if you can hear that in the background. Uh, as you can see, it's got a Nürburgring plaque. Bit of rust uh, in the obvious places that you'd find rust, so it is a bit... On the bad side, there you go, there's a bit of a description about it. Let's look at the description quickly, see what it says. It is build number 444 out of 835 made. Um, if you guys are wondering what Brad paid for his, I'm pretty sure he paid in the low 5Ks for it. I think he said about £5,200 he paid for his. Um, let's just scroll through quickly a little more, as you can see. Loads of other ones. Um, you've got an Arctic edition. Uh... Another Arctic Edition, Arctic Edition. He's, I didn't know Arctic Edition was a thing. Here you go, here's another Nürburgring one. So, £8,997 with uh, two keys, full service history, and 92,000 miles. This is an 08 plate, so it's the same as Brad's. Um, and as you can see, there's another one there, nine and a half grand with 79,000 miles on the clock. So, yeah, the market for these is, as you can see, quite varied um, as we as we scroll through. Uh, yeah, it is, it is very quite varied, to be fair. Um, but that gives you a rough price point. So, even on the used car market, for a rough one, you're still paying upwards of about four grand... F uh, no, not four grand, sorry. About two grand, three grand more than what you'd be paying for a low-budget, normal edition. So, there you go, guys. Let me know what you think down below. Do you think the, um, the Nürburgring edition is worth it? over what you can see here the standard vxrs let me know i'd love to hear your views and opinions but with that like i said in the last clip of my face like comment subscribe all that good jazz and i'll catch you guys in the next one